I'm going to try again to lay out some thoughts for you. Um, these are thoughts that I've been laying out for our church. Um, so uh, I had a little technical snafu and hopefully this will work out. So uh, I'm going to go back a little bit. What I'm focusing on is how we can improve our homes and have uh, homes built on a solid ground, solid foundation. The very first thing I talked about was having a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ and to, to, to not only love him, but to respect him by doing what he says. Uh, and they go together um, because, um, you know, when you, when you, first of all, the Bible very clearly teaches that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and what to me what the fear of the Lord is is that I have a, a response to who he is and what he says and does and that response takes over all other responses in my life um, in, in other words instead of me fearing what people think or fearing uh, failure or fear fearing what is to come uh, there is an overwhelm and, and responding to those uh, I, I am captivated and captured by who God is and what he says and first of all I feel a conviction of sin and convinced that I have sinned against a holy God but that leads me to a place where I, I see the gospel that God sent his son Jesus and he performed uh, the the what needed to be done in order for me to have eternal life and, and that's he died on the cross for my sins he paid that price for me so that I am, am redeemed and when I call on his, the name of the Lord and am saved uh, I'm overwhelmed the love of God is poured out in my heart and perfect love casts out fear but those two things you know I I respond to God through obedience because of who he is and what he says and what he does and and i and, but also um you cannot say god i love you and don't do what he says um because if you have a obedience problem you got a love problem it, you respond lovingly to your father uh because you obey him all right so i laid that out to you to you but i want to focus a few minutes on what happened and why there is such difference between men and women and what happened um, in, in, in the fall. Uh, and, and so I want, I want to just lay out what God's plan was real quickly and then what happened in the fall and why this love and respect thing is so critical in our, in our homes, particularly in our marriages. The thing that we first see is that the Lord looked at Adam and said, it's not good for you to be alone, okay? Uh, I'm going to make you a help, helper comparable to him. And so w what the Lord is saying is, I'm a God of relationship. I, I'm God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We see it in Genesis. At the beginning, let us make man in his own image. So we see God is a God that dances with himself. And he, uh, he, is, a com he is a God of community. And so we have here him saying, you know, I want you to dance too. And not just dance with me, but I want you to dance and, and have companionship with uh, another. And so he uh, lays out and, and, and creates uh, all these um, creatures, but they don't quite fit the bill. So he took, the Bible goes on to say, then the rib which the Lord God had made was taken from man and made into the woman, and he brought her to the man. And so what he's saying, the, the closest part of your vital organs, I've pulled that out and I have um, pulled out aspects of who I am. I believe they're the feminine aspects of who I am and have placed them in a woman. And so now the two become one flesh. And Adam said, um, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh and she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man now I, i've got a, a side note here i think he called her woman because he looked at her and said whoa man and it stuck but that's that's uh, not in theological books but um and and so 
Adam found his help me. Adam found uh, something that was not just companionship, but you'll see it was even beyond companionship. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. So this is a picture, almost a, a picture of, um, of, of sexuality where a man and a woman come together and they're joined together in the flesh and out of that joining it, it is conceived a new being and that new being is a marriage and it's so important for us to not only love our spouses but to love our marriages because marriages can be difficult marriages can be hard marriages can be stinky marriages can often be nasty why is that important because our firstborn child can be nasty and stinky and smelly and inconvenient and you're waking up in the middle of the night and thinking is this really worth it well the answer is yes because you have this baby that you're caring for will sometimes then they become adolescents and whoa it's different but we still as parents say i choose to commit to stick this thing out we have to have that that kind of covenant relationship with our marriages not just to love our wives and love our husbands but to love our marriages as well and and to 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 stick it out we're not we would we would you know as i say this many of you will hear uh you know can you imagine getting to the end of you know, wake up in the middle of the night and thinking uh, no, no more no more of these smells i'm just getting rid of my child we couldn't imagine but we do that often with our relationship so uh, God's saying don't do that with the covenant of marriage but the two become one flesh and it says they were both naked and had no shame and and this is the the blessing of of marriage God provided uh, marriages and families to meet our deepest needs and men and women are different but but in this case what you see is they were both naked and had no shame. So what the blessing is, is we have a place where we can experience um, and know and receive uh, the attention that we're looking for. And not only that, we have a place where we can experience uh, positive um, attention and affection. And so the, these two things are, are so important. We get the affection that we're looking for, healthy affection, not negative affection, not negative touch, but healthy connection. And also positive regard, positive respect. They were naked. They were exposed to each other. They were vulnerable, but they felt no shame because there was no pointing out of faults. Um, there was an acceptance of one to another. There was a, a relationship where there was not only love, but there was respect for one another. Uh, and so that's the foundation of the home. Uh, a home is to be a place where children um, uh, have positive experience, positive regard and healthy attachment. And uh, adults feel it. And it's it's just a part of the environment of the home. Well, the curse comes, and this is what happens with the curse. Uh, first of all, uh, they the first thing that happened after they had uh, taken the fruit, and of course the temptation is critical because the temptation says if you eat this you'll be like God, which is to me modern day humanism. Uh, we get to choose our own tr truth. We get to choose what family is and what family isn't. If it feels good for me and I'm not hurting anybody, all those are human-centered uh, ideation and, and, and not putting uh, God and his revelation first. But when they took that and ate of it, the Lord God called to Adam and said, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice. And I was afraid. First time he felt rejection. He felt the fear of failure. And he, he said, I, I hid because I was naked and I hid myself. And so 
Right there you have the consequence of sin. Death and despair have entered into the world. And uh, the curse has entered into the world. And as a result of the curse, um, you know, we grasp for security now because death took away our sense of security. Um, we're insecure. Uh, we're going to be, we, there's a, a fear of being alone. There's a fear of, of, um, of uh, being separated from the ones we love. Uh, to, and this is what God said. Here's the results of sin. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception and, and pain. You shall bring forth children and your desires shall be for your husband. Three things right there. Number one, the conception of relationships is difficult um, because of death and despair entering into the world. Um, we learn how to do uh, relationships and families from our parents and our parents' parents. And we look for uh, men uh, and women. And anyway, make a long story short, relationships become difficult because we're not looking for the right thing. Uh, number two is... Um, that uh, not a conception of children, but also the birth of children and the separation of a child from the body and the separation from a child from the family is painful. Why is it painful? Death has entered into the world and you can, your child can experience death or despair at any given point. And that's a very frightening thing. The most uh, most painful thing, in my opinion, that a, a human can experience is a mother or a father losing their child. And, and this is the, the result of, cur of the curse. And so there is a, a sense of fear uh, and there's this desire to keep security around, a desire for women to, um, to, to nest and to protect and, and to make sure everything's okay. And then the third thing is your desire shall be for your husband. And this is a curse where a husband's out trying to do what they do to make a difference in the world. And a woman is wanting uh, attach <coughs> attachment, but the man is not on the same page, uh, not because uh, of um, a desire not to be. It's just they're, they're, they're wired different. The men and women are different. And the curse affected women differently. It's very clear in God's word. The curse of death and despair affects men in this way. Then to Adam, God said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I have commanded, saying, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake and your toil. You shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. Um, uh, and you shall eat of, and, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. For the dust of it you were taken, and for the and for dust you are, and dust you shall return. And so here it is: not only death, but despair. Despair has entered the world. Not only have we lost a sense of security, but we've lost a sense of meaning and significance because everything we work for can come to an end. And so here we are working, 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 working as men, and all we get is thorns and thistles. We go to work mm -hmm. and people don't feel um, feel connected to us and uh, or, or, uh, you know, we don't feel important and, and uh, we get, uh, you know, we get criticized and complained. Um, I, I tell women, and women don't, don't understand this, but most men, nine out of ten men, if you were to say to us, what would you rather be at work, love, feel uh, loved or respected? And men constantly will say, I'd rather you respect me and not love me than love me and not respect me. And so uh, the curse is uh, that we will grasp for and we will desire a sense of significance and, and yearn for it. But all we get is thorns and thistles and we're going to return to the dust. There's a sense of futility, this sense of despair. And so when a, a man and woman come together, uh, a woman is grasping for love and a, a man's wanting respect and they don't 
kind of go together. So I'm going to go through the next section about uh, how this cycle can cause a lot of trouble in our homes.